Hey guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to Unit 1 of our Blues Essentials Level 3 course. And in this lesson, we're going to be working through the second part of that riff. So we kind of got it up to the point of this... Uh... <laughs> Except not at that speed, okay? But we've done that part of the riff. And now we're going to have this really cool... <laughs> this really cool octave part. Okay? Equally challenging, but I wanted to throw it in there because it allows you to start refining this it's kind of, I'm strumming all the strings, but now I'm hearing the higher strings rather than the lower strings. So most of this riff so far has been the lower strings. Now we're going to bring in some of the higher strings because there's another new challenge there for us that awaits us. There's always a lovely new challenge. It's just really fun process to be going through and getting this nailed. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. guys, if you're just tuning into this uh, awesome Blues Essentials Level 3 course, then please do remember that you can head on over to the website to get all the tab, the worksheets, everything to ensure that you get the most out of every single lesson. As well as that, please do like and subscribe and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear how you're getting on with the course and we can answer any questions that you have. Okay then guys, first of all, I hope you're getting on okay with this. Remember, I don't mind if it's sounding sloppy as long as we got the beat placement right, you know, the actual notes are in the right place and your right hand is moving, the sloppiness will be refined gradually. Now, to progress the riff, the second half of the riff sounds like this. Do it again, a bit slower. Okay, love this little riff. Love this little riff. Okay, in terms of you know technically or so theoretically, what I'm doing here is again just using that pentatonic scale. Okay, I'm using my pentatonic scale, but I'm now bringing in an element from the major pentatonic as well. Okay, so you'll notice it's all in this kind of octave shape, so like this. So what this is, is essentially saying to myself, well, you know, I want to do these notes, but I want to double up those notes, I want to create something a bit more, especially when you're doing a lot of this kind of big chunky rhythm, quite often it's nice to double up the notes. Um, you'll hear it a lot in funk music, on disco as well, kind of pop. You know, where I'm really letting that right hand just go crazy, but I'm just only playing one or two notes and quite typically an octave like this. So this is an octave. So I'm playing the flat seven and the flat seven, okay? Exactly the same note, just an octave apart. So that's the seventh fret of the D string and the 10th fret of the B string. And importantly here, again, I wanna make sure that I can kind of try and play it by only hearing those two notes. So my second finger there is blocking off the low E, the A, then my first finger is playing the D string, my first finger is blocking the G string, my little finger is playing the B, and my little finger and first finger are blocking off the high E string. So that's our first little test. Can we kind of get that shape together? Again, it might sound a little bit that like you're hitting something else, so just gradually just lay some fingers down. It might be that you're not pushing hard enough on the actual fingers that you need, so make sure that these ones are firmly on the fretboard and the rest are kind of laying down. It's, it's a lot of kind of little mini muscles that are working here to kind of refine this, but again, that's where that kind of sloppiness starts and gradually we refine it. So that's our shape, okay? And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sliding this shape up from the flat seven to the root, like that. So we're gonna go up. Play it again. Don't worry about the rhythm for now too much. We're just going to hit the notes. So, again. so we go. Then back to the flat seven, and then this this one here. Okay. So this is where we're going to start bringing in a kind of combo of the major and the minor. So we're very much here, which is our minor third, our flat third. Okay. And this note here is actually our six, isn't it? So there's the flat seven and there's the six. And the six is notorious from the 
the major pentatonic. One, two, three, five, six. So we're kind of using that box two of the major pentatonic with the box one, so much like we've been doing all the way through this process. But now we're just bringing them together in a little mini chord. Really nice sounding thing. I won't worry too much about what that chord might be called. It could be called a lot of things, depending on what angle you look at it from. In my eyes, it's just simply a kind of a nice combo of the minor thirds with the six, okay? Gives you that kind of quite aggressive, quite dissonant tone, I guess, because you're kind of combining minor and major in quite an aggressive way, but it's great, isn't it? And dissonance is great because when it comes to resolving it, you've got your stuff. We're back on that B afterwards. So the riff here is, Now, with this one here, it's quite hard to strum all six strings and just get that ringing out. What I tend to do is there, I kind of, I don't tend to strum the E string, certainly, and probably not the A string either. I just tend to go from the D string downwards. Because I also don't want too thick a sound at the bottom, but you can do it, okay? It's not unheard of, it's not unsaid, and again, that's part of the refining process. So you might start by wanting to do it with six strings, and then gradually you kind of slightly refine what that right hand is doing, okay? But that's the, that's the riff. Okay, that's what we're trying to get to. So in terms of the placement within the bar, much, very similar to the previous one. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and a, a and a four and a four E and, and a four. Sorry about the singing. Just uh, whatever helps get it into your brain, right? If it, if it works, it works. Um, apparently medieval singing helps to get it into my brain. Um, but it's the same rhythm. What I'm trying to get out there is it's, it's the same time. And a four E and. And a four E and. Which means with the right hand, it's exactly the same right hand movement. Down, up, down. Uh, so down, up, down, and down. Down, up, down, and down. Okay. So in theory, the right hand, you should just be able to do it already, in theory, because it's exactly the same as in the first one. So it's getting your brain around the fact that that's essentially the same thing with your right hand, because it's very different with your left hand, but it is. So we can try and slowly start to put that together, just a cappella for a second without a drum beat. that drum beat in so 55 bpm we'll just loop that that part there things I want to talk about before the end of this lesson okay so that's the second half of the riff and we've got the first half of the riff is that okay so the what we want to do first is take that drum beat and just kind of piece those two together and that will be our new loop okay so again 55 bpm two and four and ah, that's the first one and then Okay. 
Now, now that you've got that right hand moving, right, the advantage of that can start to show. So in those bits where I'm really leaving a deliberate space, as you develop this, you might feel like, actually, I want to fill those in with a bit more chunk. You know, I want to start hitting those notes. That will give you more kind of ghost note kind of sounds, a bit maybe more of a rhythmical groove if you feel like you want to fill it out a little bit more. Just have a listen to the difference, right? So first time around, exactly as we've done it. Which is clean, it's precise, and it's a great way to start a riff. Oops, and I need to stop talking. <laughs> but now, what if I want to bring it out a bit more? See how I'm bringing more hits with the right hand. I'm bringing in more hits with that right hand. So I'm starting to just whenever I want to. And I can do that because my right hand is already doing all the work for me. It's allowing me to, if I want to just touch the strings, I can. Wherever I want to. You know, wherever I feel to, okay? And maybe at that speed you're thinking, okay, it's, it's a bit laboured, but as you get up more to the speed of the track, you know, those little extra notes can sound really cool, okay? But our focus is the clean sound. Sometimes you need that space, and, and in this instance for this riff, I feel like we need that space initially, but it, that's where you could develop it. Okay guys, so there we have it. We've now got our two parts of the main, let's call it section A, the main riff, all right? And again, don't worry too much if it's a bit sloppy, just make sure the timing's in place, you're doing it with a beat at a BPM that kind of suits you. Um, I would say that we're aiming to get it up to roughly 65, 70 BPM, something like that, to, to be ready for the, for the full track. Um, so if you're at 55 BPM, you're doing a great job already. So there we have it, get that together, and in the next lesson, we're gonna start looking at the B section. Okay, so that's it from me for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember that you can find the full playlist over here if you want to start from the beginning or the next lesson you can find here. Also, don't forget to leave us a like. Please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment. We'll be loving to hear from you how you're getting on and we'll happily answer any questions you've got about the course.